Hey guys, welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Max Henner. Do you ever wonder what astronauts munch on when they're out in space? Well, back in the early days of the space program, on the Mercury missions, it wasn't very appetizing. We're talking cubed food and pureed foods that astronauts had to squeeze out of a tube, like toothpaste. Today, astronauts are eating a lot better, chowing down on stuff like shrimp cocktail, brownies, even burgers. But it's still tough to prepare food for space. Not only does it have to be light and take up a little room, it has to have a long shelf life at room temperature and not be messy. Oh, and it um, has to be healthy. And did I mention it has to taste good? Wait a second, nutritious and delicious? I don't know about you, but I find those kinds of foods hard to come by. But thanks to some NASA know-how, you might soon be able to get your grub on with some healthier versions of your guilty pleasures without sacrificing flavor. How'd they do this? There's something called Nutrigrass, which is a fat substitute developed by Diversified Services Corporation with assistance from NASA, and is now available for commercial use. What's that mean? Well, tests of Nutrigrass show that hamburgers made with the fat substitute lost no flavor and held up as well as ready-to-eat beef patties over a 30-day period. This fat substitute is available in liquid, gel, or dry forms, so it can be easily added to whatever foods the manufacturers wish to use it in. Testing has also begun on using it in pork, chicken, and turkey, with thoughts of also adapting it for things like ice cream, soups, sauces, and even salad dressings. And while Nutrigrass looks like fat and tastes like fat, it's a whole lot healthier. It even costs less than the fat it replaces. And coming full circle, Nutrigrass has been used for food eaten on the International Space Station as a flavor enhancer and shelf life extender. So once the astronauts have their healthy burgers out in space, you know they're gonna wanna throw some ketchup on them, right? You know how much of a pain it can be to get ketchup out of a bottle here on Earth. So, do you think it's easier or harder for an astronaut to pour ketchup in reduced gravity? Trick question. Astronauts actually use foil packets instead of bottles, but NASA still studies the properties of ketchup that make it pour really slowly and then smother your fries in one big glob. What's that property? It's called sheer thinning, and ketchup's not the only substance that does it. Stuff like whipped cream, paint, honey, and nail polish are all thick when they're still, but become thin and flow easily when they're shaken or stirred. Sheer thinning may be all around us, but scientists are still puzzled by it. Scientists have zeroed in on the molecular level in the fluid to try to understand the phenomenon, but it continues to confuse chemists and physicists alike. Even today, the only way to anticipate the changes in ketchup's viscosity is to wait and watch it happen, which is how I usually end up wearing the ketchup for my fries on my shirt. The researchers are hoping that the data collected during the final flight of the Columbia may shed new light on the slow flow properties of ketchup and other complex fluids. The space experiment, Critical Viscosity of Xenon-2, or CVX-2 for short, provided the first real-world confirmation about shear thinning in a simple fluid. The CVX-2 experiment aboard STS-107 used xenon, a simple liquid whose molecules are made up of a single kind of atom. Simple liquids don't usually experience shear thinning. They're either thick or they're thin. But under special conditions of pressure and temperature, even simple fluids can exist as both a liquid and a gas at the same time. At the critical point, the xenon behaved much like ketchup. CVX-2 had to be done in space, without the restrictions of gravity. The results of the experiment matched the scientists' predictions. Good news, not only for the ketchup connoisseurs, but for engineers designing oils for new high-performance vehicles as well. You know, that's how science works. Scientists become curious about something like shear thinning, and they figure out ways to study it from different angles, like in the space shuttle orbiting Earth. And then, results from their experiments point out if their original ideas were right or wrong. And then, engineers are trying to solve problems, like making oil that slips and slides in a different way. And they see what scientists have learned about shear thinning, and voila, Eureka Shazam. New understanding leads to new products. Hey, if they can figure out a way to let me pour my ketchup without drowning my fries, I'm all for it. That's all for now. Until next time, I'm Max Hennard, and thanks for watching NASA Launchpad.